We have been witnessing this morning a lot of discussion on the implementation of European policies on internal market and we have seen that the opinion of public is not at all uniform and we can predict that there may be some complication. As a transmission system operator, we are in a very interesting position that from one side we are pushed to secure the security of supply, to provide quality of, of supply of electricity. On the other hand, we are also pushed by legislation to integrate markets, to provide uniform conditions for all uh, end users and also to, in fact, create such a new uh, framework. That is why I would like to share with you the point of view, not from the policy perspective, but from the real project point of view, as we have recently successfully finished the Czech-Slovak-Hungarian market coupling of daily markets. And I would like to point out the good and the bad of the project and also what are the consequences of such integration from the real use point of view, not only from the really policy perspective. The Czech-Slovak-Hungary market coupling project is a very important one as we have, as is the one of the first coupling projects in the Eastern Europe and also is very interesting in a way that all project parties were willing and voluntarily approached to this project. So this project was not driven by the, some kind of top-down approach, by some kind of directive or so but was driven by a real will of all participants. What is interesting, even though market coupling is a rather simple thing, it took more than one year to couple three markets, three developed markets. And that's one key point to remember that even though we have very good uh, overview of how the project can go on, it's very difficult to predict when it will end. And we can see a very ambitious timelines and ambitious milestones to be set by the European Union, but as, as we talk about 2014, 2015 for the internal market, but from the reality, just a simple project with six parties, I mean three TSOs and three power exchanges, took more than one year. So imagine how a project where 42 European TSOs and about 20 European power exchange can look like. The project itself uh, had many goals that were from various fields, but among the most important ones are the last one, and these are the fact that we would like to prepare ourselves to join the Europe. Of course, we have talked about the regional approach, about the fact that not all regions are the same level of development. However, the integration is not meant to really to bring benefits only to the individual parties but to the whole system even though it might be for some parties it might not be the best approach. The second big goal is also to prepare ourselves for the future target model. As you might know there, was, there were very, a lot of discussions how to implement or how to create the internal electricity market and the target models were finished just recently when we have created new legislation, new piece of legislation which will be invalid within next years. So this project also aimed to benefit or to, to provide benefit for the participant but mainly to prepare ourselves for this huge European target. The project itself was, we can say, quite a small one because can, it was like about 10 people who worked around on this but with the huge impact. There were very mm, clear outview how the project would look like and what would be the solution. And it's always in the, when you start a project, but I would like to point out that mainly during the project we, we saw that what we thought would be great in, in the end was not the best solution. So when doing the European project, and it is often the case, we always change our mind during the system and not all parties are ready to this. So the, re, the rigid approach of European Union is often very bad for this because some parties don't express their 
their position until the end. So please, when you are going to the project, be ready to change your point of view, maybe for 180 degrees. The other very difficult point is to, in fact, to contractually bind ourselves for cooperation. But the project is easy. You just spend some money and, uh, and build your solution. But when you need to sign an agreement, that's always a problem. And when we have such ambitious goals from the European Union, they, the people who set these goals don't ever thought about, about agreement and about the real cooperation. And what, that was one of the biggest problems in our project, to sign an agreement which everybody would be happy with. So finally, on the 10th of September, after a very bad discussion, we agreed that we will go live on 11th of September and we happily connected the daily markets. It was, I think, the great success for all the participants. It was, it was uh, welcomed by, by all the parties. But that's not the end. We are also, of course, planning to, to extend our project, to extend uh, for uh, another countries and the markets. And, of course, we are now preparing this project to become the European one. But since we have connected these three countries, are we integrated yet? Does it mean that that is the end of, of, of our fight for integration, our, our way to, to the ideal internal market? The problem is that the integration itself does not contain only harmonization of rules, harmonization of gate closure times or any other uh, parts of the business. The main problem is how, if we are integrated, how to in fact transfer the electricity, how to exchange the goods on the market. And now we are facing the thing that the capacities are not used only for trade, but also other parts of the system are fighting for this. We can see that renewable energy is a big problem, unpredicted flows, uh, are using the capacity and decreasing the, the space for trading. On the other hand, TSOs must ensure that there is a security of supply, so we also reserve some place on the transmission companies' cities. So in the end, we can, we can end up in a situation that we are completely integrated, but we have no internal market because there is no capacity free for the trade, because this capacity is used by uh, by security margins, by security of supply, or by any other thing which is more important than the trade itself. So the only way forward now is to start building new infrastructure. But it takes years to build a new line. It takes 10 years in Czech Republic to build a new line. And eight of, the, eight of the city years are uh, devoted only to administrative purposes, not for building itself. So in the meanwhile, we face the problem that uh, we must find a compromise between these factors, who and how the capacity will be used. And I think that we four region uh, have a common position. All countries, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia and Hungary faces these problems right now. And as we discussed this morning, this is mainly caused by the extensive development of the renewables and also bad market design due to the big German-Austrian Austrian market zone. So now, what, what can we do? I think that it's a, it's a good opportunity that all the, all the stakeholders in these four countries, as they have, in fact, the same initiative, the same interest, start to cooperate and try to, to create some kind of negotiating power and try to, together, build a reasonable approach how to integrate the markets and, at the same time, keeping the security of supply. To conclude, I think that integra market integration is a, is a big step towards creating a competitive market in the European Union and to create a really good uh, platform for trading electricity. Czech, Slovak, Hungary market coupling was a big step towards this and I'm proud that I have been part of the project. On the other hand, the other factors can cause that even though we are well integrated, there will be nothing to do, nothing to trade. There will be, again, local, local markets and local conditions. So I think the V4 countries can now, V4 stakeholders can now 
be joined together and to prepare a common position and to push local requirements ahead. Thank you very much.